Hey, hello everybody. I'm here. And uh, now I guess you can hear me. How you doing? How's everybody today? Uh, since I got one watching, which is me, so there's nobody here yet. So, oh, there comes somebody. Well, don't know who it is, but we'll see. Seems like I was just here a few hours ago doing the uh, unboxing of these things. And uh, I guess I'll keep talking for posterity's sake until some more people show up. But uh, the nice thing about these live streams is uh, that uh, the replays are important, too. So even though you don't have a big live audience starting out, it, it, it does make a, a YouTube video that uh, you hope people will find. And uh, some of the keywords work and they'll look. At any rate, this is... Uh, this is me in my Ant-Man Halloween costume, and a very expensive Halloween costume, by the way. Can't see anything in here, but uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. So we got anybody here? Anybody? Nobody in the chat? No, nothing. Okay. Be that way. Somebody say hello to me. Ah. All right, the whole idea today, and uh, I'm just going to get started here, because my goal here today was to uh, actually install the uh, DJI air unit here, this little thing, install it in a, uh, in a quad so that I can actually fly the thing and see how it works. And, you know, I have a number of builds that I did with the analog, of course, and some of them are really nice flying quads, but uh, it was a, a tough decision trying to decide which one of those I wanted to try to, to modify uh, to see if um, I could make the air unit fit. It's not that big, but it, in fact, it came within a 16th of an inch of fitting perfectly in that frame that, uh, that I just, uh, uh, that I just did um, uh, the Mitch 5000, the old Tyro 99 conversion. But, uh, you know, there's two ways to think about it. On one hand, you have a perfectly set up and good flying quad. Why screw with it? And uh, second of all, it, it has to fit. And I have seen that. Uh, ah, look who's here. Hi, Steve Carpenter. How you doing? Glad somebody's listening. That's very nice. Uh, don't have a big. A big turnout yet this morning, but uh, or this afternoon. It's one o'clock here. Uh, unfortunately, it's be one o'clock in the morning over there in Australia, and uh, I don't know how many of those guys. Although I may get uh, uh, manic Trev. He he seems to not sleep and be up all night, and sometimes Spike is up all night. So maybe maybe people will stop by. But uh, I'm going to just do this, and I figure, well, I'm going to build this thing. I could do one of two things. I could uh, just make a build video, condense it down to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and, and leave, out, uh, leave out a lot of stuff. But uh, I uh, uh, have watched a lot of those build videos, and what I've, what I've noticed about them is that the, um, a lot of the puzzling steps, a lot of the... Uh, things that uh, you have to sometimes stop and figure out like I did yesterday with activating and linking uh, the DJI system. Some of those things, they just brush right over. And, and uh, you know, I'm thinking that uh, if I'm going to be doing it, I kill two birds with one stone, just let you guys come along with me uh, through the good part and the bad part, the puzzling part, the stuff that doesn't work, the stuff that does work. And uh, you know, and people watching the replays, uh, it may be a couple hours long video, but you can always, uh, if you're watching a replay, jump around the parts that seem a little slow. And uh, so I decided on this DJI stuff, since it is so new that uh, I would um, just go ahead and uh, just start a live stream and, uh, and, and away we go. Uh, what do I got here? Got a text from somebody. Uh, Get FPV wants to sell me more stuff. Well, I got enough stuff right now. So, Papa Joe W, how you doing? Glad you glad you stopped by and uh, let me uh, 
Let me see. Uh, we've got uh, four people watching now. So that'd be Papa Joe, Steve Carpenter, me, and a mystery person, um, which is okay. Uh, I also uh, am doing this on StreamYard. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick stick a link uh, in the... Um, I'm going to stick a link in, in, in the chat if anybody wants to chime in with me. Now, it may, when you do, if you do come in, when you do, it may take a few seconds for me to glance back at the screen and actually notice that somebody's sitting in the green room. But uh, I appreciate your pa patience. And uh, I want to put it here. Join the panel and the link. And there it is. So if anybody wants to come in, just click that link and stream yards from your cell phone or your uh, computer. And uh, I think that uh, it'll work. So seeing as I don't have a big, huge crowd at this point to uh, interact with, uh, Papa Joe and Steve Carpenter and me, it appears, if you can believe the numbers that it says and how many people are actually watching or listening, I'm going to go over here to uh, to the build table and talk about... Uh, how I got to this point and how I decided which quad I wanted to, I wanted to put this thing in. Um, here's the air unit right there. Now this is a, uh, a custom build that I did. It's my latest, it's my latest build and it's a, uh, it's a seven inch, um, GEP RC frame, um, and I originally built it to put the uh, the Cadex uh, Tarsi camera, Tarsi Air camera, the little dual FPV and and uh, 4K camera in. And uh, I haven't really flown it other than to test hover it, fly it around a little bit, line of sight to make sure it works. But uh, I've been doing other projects and things, so it it just it just sat there. I I did manage to get the uh, uh, controller uh, flashed with the latest version of version of uh, Beta Flight. Uh, uh, and, uh, I'm looking at the chat here. We have Mark Linder. Hello, Mark. How are you? Well, I hope this is, uh, going to be more fun than, than yard work. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by my friend. I, I'm going to go ahead and give you a blue, a blue wrench, like most of the people that come into my chat. So I know who's new. If anybody comes new in, they're going to not have the wrench. So. I just gave it to you and, and thanks. Thanks for stopping by. And I hope, I hope that this is enjoyable. I I'm sure that there's going to be moments of, of clarity, uh, interrupting, uh, what may be, uh, long periods of, of, of boredom, but, uh, that's, that's the way live stream things are, uh, especially when you're building because, uh, you can't just fast forward or speed up or cut out in editing all of those, uh, all of those other boring steps. So what I'm what I've what I built was this seven inch uh, cinem quad designed for uh, cinematic FPV um, using the uh, the GEP the GEP frame and I'm, I'm I'm trying to think of the name of this frame it's a it's a LC anyway it's a GEP RC frame and it's a dead cat design and by dead cat design what they mean is the uh, the front, uh, the front legs are kind of moved to the back, backwards, so that uh, the props don't show in the shots of the front camera, which is why I picked this frame for the Tarsi Air, because uh, that would be the 4K camera, not a GoPro mounted up on top here. And I use the, uh, the Zing E series motors, and being a 7-inch quad uh, with bigger props, it, it's a little lower KV. It's, it seems to be, I think it's a 1700. Is that what this is? Uh, 1800 kV motor, but it's designed for 4S. Um, I did put the uh, put a GPS module in the back here, and I do have a uh, ViFly a beacon, one of those uh, wireless unwired uh, down quad locators, which starts uh, alerting you if it senses a, a, a higher than normal G uh, G load. So um, this is the quad that I that I that I want to use. It is a long range quad. It has uh, the the Free Sky um, R9 uh, system in it, which is 900 megahertz. And 
the uh, the antenna for the R9 system is uh, is right here. The two kind of like crossfire style with the T antenna, and uh, so I've got a good a system that that should be uh, something I don't have to worry about RSSI because at the current time on the DJI system uh, in the uh, on-screen display, the telemetry about the only thing they're they're showing you is uh, is the battery voltage. So. Um, I think that that uh, that I won't have to worry about the RSSI. The reason that I decided to put the uh, air unit into this particular quad was that it's just big. Uh, there's just no no doubt that there's going to be enough room. And and a little earlier, I was looking around trying to decide where I wanted to mount this thing. And since the uh, since the Tarsier camera let me turn to a different uh, different monitor here so we can see if you can see this. The Tarsier camera uh, electronics are all under here. And then there's really, I got the receiver down in here, but there's really nothing uh, from all, all the way from the camera back to about here where the flight stack is. There's plenty of room to mount it. And I decided that I was going to uh, mount it uh, underneath the top plate, right about in this position right here and what that'll do is that will give me access to the sd card on the side here where this uh, little cutout thing is in the frame and uh it'll fit nicely between these two standoffs that are uh, that are up here i get that down but there's two standoffs up top so uh, and then uh just mount the camera in there, run this back. So the first thing that I need to get started doing is I need to take this apart and uh, and get rid of the stuff that uh, that I'm just uh, I'm just not going to be using. So let's start uh, start taking this thing apart here. All right, I hope everybody can see everything. I'm going to glance at the chat now and then, but there doesn't appear to be. A whole lot of activity and I have all two people watching so thanks for keeping me company but uh, I guess either a lot of people haven't found this thing or aren't that interested in it or I'm not that big a YouTube deal anyway to draw a ton of people but but I think uh, I was gonna do this anyway so I may as well do it uh, on a live stream Maybe somebody will get something out of it down the road. Or hopefully they might uh, actually come in and, and join me here. Okay. So there's the top plate. Let's get all these screws and washers out of the way here. And off comes the top plate. Okay. Okay. So put that aside, and the first step is going to be to uh, get rid of the the Tarsier camera, and I've got the original box from it here, so I'm just going to put it right back in the, in the box. There's some pieces and parts that they give you. Um, okay. So... We'll take this out. All right. Take these screws out of here. And take the SD card out. I'll put the SD card over here where I don't where I don't lose it. So uh Let's see. I think this. This out. And we're going to unplug the, uh, the little plug from it. And now we got to take the camera out. So the camera screws 
you know, the first thing I really should do is take these props off and get them out of the way. So let's do that first. Let's get the props. I should have done that before I started doing anything. We'll get these props out of the way. Let's find a good place for them over here. Because we're going to be putting power to this thing eventually and what we don't want is we don't want the uh, we don't want the props on in the house when we fire this up okay and one more also make it a little less cumbersome to work on all right so props are out of the way I have to remove the camera camera screws so we're gonna keep all these screws in the box here with with the camera and all the camera parts that, uh, that come with it here's the lens cap so now we got to pull the camera out and I think in order to get the camera out of here I may have to uh, take off that uh, The front standoffs here. And I'll leave them off until I mount the, uh, the DJI camera. So there we go. So now this camera should pull right out of the back of this. Just, just makes it through the TPU, okay. And there is the, uh, there's the uh, Cadex Tarsier and, uh, and its board. Uh, so we'll put the lens cap back on here and put that camera back in its box because it's about a 80 or $90 little deal. And I want to make sure that when I go to install it again, I have, I have everything that, uh, that I need and this uh, I think this little piece goes in here I think these other other pieces go in in there and then the rest is going to be the uh, the wires and the screws so I seem to have lost one of the screws here but that's okay I have plenty of screws so let's put these screws back here. Now, the next thing we need to do is uh, cut this tie wrap that I had holding the little camera control connector to the uh, to the standoff. I want to take the receiver here is stuck is stuck on with some sticky, so I'm going to take that up temporarily and I'm going to reposition that probably somewhere somewhere else so it won't be underneath the underneath the air unit and here I've got the wires from the uh, the VTX so let's, uh, let's see if I can zoom in on that a little better and uh, so you can see what I'm doing there we go so what I need to do now is uh, 
remove these wires from from the VTX unsoldered M. So turn the soldering iron on and I take the little solder cleaning pad and run into the the other room and get some get some water on it. I, I'm wearing a wireless microphone so I can I can wander all over the place. Still talk. Amazing. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna unsolder those and with the new DJ, with the new FPV system, we really have no use for uh, for those connections on the flight controller anyway. That or the connections out to the VTX. So we're going to uh, declutter some of the wiring in this thing. Uh, I missed what frame you're using. Oh, okay, Mark. I'm using the uh, the GEP. What the hell is the name of that? Um, I'll tell you in a second. <laughs> I keep forgetting the name of the frame. I have it in my uh, have it in my radio here, so that's going to be the quick. It's going to be the quickest way to uh, to see what it is. It is a GEP LC7 frame. Uh, I really like uh, the GEP RC products. In fact, I just ordered a five-inch uh, GEP RC frame that's designed for the DJI FPV system. And that, that's going to be the, since I got two air units with my, uh, with my um, package that I bought, I got the uh, goggles and two air units. I'm going to uh, use that for my first custom build where I, where I actually build it, uh, build it up from scratch. I've, I've got a, uh, uh, there it is. A, a a nice brand new Mamba F4 that I'll throw in there. I like that stack. It's a relatively inexpensive stack. It's what I've got in in this build. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove these wires and let's get this in the frame so you can see see what I'm doing. And this shouldn't be all that difficult to do. One, okay, so that is the harness there, and let me make sure I haven't, I haven't bridged any of those connections look at it real close they look okay and this uh, take this little harness and stick it in with the uh, stick it in with the camera since it comes with the camera we'll stick it in here and uh, put that in there and I think that that's everything that goes in this box. I won't worry about the hardware because I have tons of hardware. All right, so that camera is uh, is all put away. The next thing that uh, that I need to remove from this build is going to be the uh, VTX. Uh, let me take a look at the chat here and see if I'm missing anybody. Nope, still just a couple, couple people hanging in here with me, which is fine. Um, all right, so the VTX is back here. And uh, I don't need the room for anything back there, but I do need to just get it out of here. And, uh, and it's being held on with uh, sticky tape and a couple of tie wraps. So we'll cut the tie wraps, get rid of them. I do need to get rid of the antenna. So let's uh, get that off of here. Not gonna need that. Not gonna need one of these on this build. So I'll put that over here. And then we also need to take the uh, 
SMA extension out of here too. So let's get that out of here. One thing about this DJI system is that you really, uh, it really is, is, is simpler to build than, um, than a normal VTX. We have a lot fewer components that you need to, that you need to really screw with. So there's the VTX and, uh, and the little extender. And this, this is a, this VTX is a little e machine. I think it's 850 and it's 800 milliwatt VTX and they're terrific. And I get them from, from, uh, from Banggood for, for like 12 bucks. They're ridiculously cheap. Um, but depending on how well this FPV stuff goes, I may very well uh, not be buying many VTXs anymore. We'll see. We'll see. I think this has the, I've kind of come uh, full circle in my opinion of this thing as I've seen more and more videos of it. And when I put those goggles on last night and got the camera working and took a look at the image through the, uh, through the camera, it, uh, it really, um, really blew my mind. So we've got to unsolder the, uh, the VTX. And then this over here says VCC and that's probably, that's battery voltage. That's probably where I'm going to hook up the uh, power and ground for the, uh, for the, um, DJI unit. So here we have the VTX and little, its little pigtail and wiring, and that's also spare parts now. So we've opened opened that up. I'm not going to need this piece of Velcro on there, or a piece of foam that I put under the Velcro. So let me get that out of there. Um, Not that it's going to hurt anything, but if I don't need it, I can get rid of it. There we go. And of course, it left a bunch of sticky stuff, which would be more trouble than it's worth to get out of there. All right. So, got that big capacitor under there. I can bend that up a little bit so it's not bumping up against the frame like it was. go okay so we got all that stuff out of there now this uh, this back uh, TPU piece is still going to be a good place to tie the XT32 and also uh, a nice mount for the GPS antenna which is over there and uh, the uh, when I have to remount this antenna here somewhere. I probably could mount it to the same place right here and just tie it down to the frame, but let's get rid of the, uh, of the little standoffs that are here um, that I don't need anymore because that's where the, the, uh, Tarsier was a uh, control board was mounted. Okay. Oh, I've got art. Looks like art has jumped in. Give me a second art and I will bring you in. How you doing, my friend? Is it just you and me now? I don't seem to have a big crowd here today. I guess it's a Saturday afternoon. Everybody's busy here. 
we're fighting this weather. Okay, let me come back over here and uh, bring in uh, my, wait a minute, Art, I can't bring you in without the, uh, without the proper, uh, without the proper introduction. So where, where, here it is. So uh, everybody, welcome, uh, welcome, my good buddy Art uh, from Art Code Drone Solutions. How you doing, Art? I'm doing good. Just uh, got back from doing a little shopping, got a little haircut, so I'm ready for the reunion next weekend. Ah, uh, what what reunion next weekend? It's my 40th high school reunion. Holy mackerel! That's yep. uh, 40. God, I missed my 50th. Uh, <laughs> well, you're probably going on your 60th. Well, I graduated in 1964. Oh, okay. So uh, 55 five years ago, years. I got five more years. But I never, you know, I, I, I left Philly when I went into the Army back in 66, and I kind of never went back. So I haven't been to any of my high school reunions. Right. I just, uh, uh, um, don't care about those people. They didn't care about me when I was in high school. So why should I care about them now? <laughs> yeah, there you go. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We're having a little, you know, that uh, tropical storm Umberto has yeah. decided that it it's going to stay way to the east of us. It's hanging around now near the poor Bahamas where they got slammed. Oh boy. And uh, they, uh, uh, but it is, causing these little blistery showers here inter yeah. intermittently you know what i mean and they mm -hmm. come and they go so it's not a day it's too windy it's not a day for fly it's a perfect day a perfect day for this yep. uh oh night train mike how you yep. doing friend good to see you uh <laughs> and look at art has not changed a bit since <laughs> <laughs> yeah hey steve glad you're still here good, good to see you yeah so at any rate uh i don't know how many of you guys are i know night train is interested in, in fpv you're way the hell ahead of me but uh, mm -hmm. i'm trying to catch up uh so what i'm doing is i'm building here art and uh yeah, you know, I've been I a chat for me i'd appreciate it and okay. you can you can watch me so with that i will swing back over to to the work the workbench okay and, commence where I left off. What I was dealing with was this uh, antenna. I have to mount this antenna down right. here now that I, I had it mounted to the little posts that, uh, uh -huh. that held the, uh, that held up the, uh, the board for the, the camera that I don't need anymore. Right. So uh, I'm going to put that there. And then what I'm going to do with the air unit here, I decided, even though it, I can run the, the wire, I'm going to mount it right here right upside down like this and sticky tape it to the top plate here oh, okay. underneath right. and it'll be behind the camera it'll be right there uh, right about there and uh run this wire back to the plate controller for power and uh, the uart connection right and then the camera will just come under here and go into the into the camera mount and that that one piece actually uh, replaces the camera and boards that i just took out the video transmitter that i just took out and uh -huh. uh, the pigtail for that so uh so while i got this open here and nothing in the way let me uh figure out how i want to how i want to tie this antenna down and of course you gotta you do them with with cable ties but i uh -huh. think that there's a bump on the bottom. So what I think I want to do is I think I'm going to take a couple of pieces of uh, foam tape, little pieces of foam tape here. Right. Make, make little, little couple little cushions out of them. Uh -huh. See what I'm doing. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to tune in tonight to see your interview with Ed Ricker. Oh yeah. yeah. Come on in. It, it. Art, Art Co. Drone Solutions. Yep. Hang out of the stars, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow yeah so i'm still trying to get ken to come on uh that's gonna be a get i i, I mean yeah. ken 
and rightly so. You know, even in chats, he he comes into chats now and then, but he doesn't generally chat individually with people. He right. usually just uh, talks to the group as a whole. And yeah, um, yeah. And I don't think I don't think he he's uh, ego an egomaniac or anything. I think it's just the practicality of yeah. having 100, almost a hundred thousand subscribers. And yeah, you know, I'm sure he's he's buddies with with a couple of them, but uh, yeah. I think that. Uh, it's it's tough to um yeah and plus he he's doing a lot all of these people stuff on the weekends you know flying his drones or he's doing some uh uh editing and, and, and so forth so he, he doesn't have a whole lot of time i have seen him on uh pusa studios a, oh really about a month ago they had him on and yeah I uh and Rick is a pretty busy guy as well. He's usually doing uh wedding stuff and uh you know doing stuff on the weekend. So luckily I, I caught him just at the right time and I was able to get him on a, a weekend. Yeah, it is a busy guy and, and of course Ed is seems like he's really like me kind of really swung to the fpv side of this house yeah um and well, uh check out his underwater drone stuff oh i haven't i haven't seen any oh, of that yet. Man. that uh if i had the money i would love to get one really yeah because i i like that underwater stuff because i'm a fisherman and yeah, that's right. That, you are, aren't you? And it gives me an opportunity to see the fish and to see the structure where they're hanging out. So that makes me a better fisherman uh, when I go catch. Could fish. you use? Could you use them to fish? You know, actually go down there, and, like the guys are drone fishing off the beach. They're using the uh, drones to no take the, take the line and the hook out. <laughs> you, you've got that uh, tether that the the underwater drone is hooked up to yeah it wouldn't, yeah wouldn't be practical but with, with an aerial drone you just fly out there and drop your lure in and uh you either reel it in or you have bait out there that just drops it uh, right in the right spot oh cool all right i'm gonna take and tuck the receiver down in right to the bottom of the frame here there you go. Uh, got that antenna wire. Welcome, Papa Joe W. Oh, hey. He was here a little earlier, and he's yeah, back. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, glad and he came back. Uh, yeah, we're still, Steve, we're still building Carter. away here. Yeah. There we go. He stuck yeah. the receiver down to the, uh, to the, uh, to the frame there. I'm going to get the cool. wires out of the way under here. Yeah. And that's... That's good. Okay. There you go. Very good. And uh, this, uh, I probably will want to, I hadn't hooked it up before, but I probably will want to hook the telemetry uh, up to a UART right. on this board. And I can, and since I don't have smart audio anymore, mm -hmm. I can hook the telemetry of this, uh, this, R9 mini receiver, which is, I left the yellow wire here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it's a little yellow wire. I left mm -hmm. it here because I didn't hook it to anything. Mm -hmm. But I can hook that now to the UART that I actually used. Yeah, I'm right here. UART, yes. <laughs> you didn't realize they, they named a whole uh, serial port uh, uh, scheme after you, did you? The yeah. UARTs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do right now is I'm going to take a serial cable. I'm going to plug it into to this controller, uh -huh. and I'm going to see in Betaflight what – let's see. So let's go over to this monitor here, uh -huh. and now let's uh, bring up Betaflight here and connect to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to make myself full screen here for a second, Art, so people can see okay. see what I'm doing. So, so now when I wiggle the drone around, 
that moves. So I do have it connected and I want to go to the ports tab and I see that I used UART3 for the VTX. So I'm not going to have UART3 anymore. I'm going to use it for uh, telemetry mm -hmm. and that would be telemetry input here and it will be it will be fire sky free sky free sky and that's all i probably should need to do and then save those changes and the reason i want telemetry on this is because i want to use it in the transmitter to uh give me alerts of things that i won't be seeing in the in the uh uh in the vtx in the goggles anymore because um In the goggles, uh, you used to see all that stuff, uh, oh. low voltage, high current, all that stuff. But you mm. can set the transmitter uh, up. It takes a little time to do, but it, it gets the telemetry from the drone. Right. It gets all the, all kinds of telemetry. It tells you the number mm. of GPS, satellite, everything. And you can actually see it on your, on your transmitter or get it to trigger voice alerts, mm -hmm. uh, like uh, read out the voltage to you once once it gets below a certain point uh right. and uh, that's going to be a good uh, uh alternative to not having that information in the uh in the goggles yeah okay so what did i say it was i said it was a uart3 yeah correct that what i said uart3 yep. okay so what i need to do is i need to have uh i'm 59 Papa Joe's back. How you doing? Okay, let's go back over here to the uh, to the build table. Alrighty. And uh, you know, I'm going to do art. I'm going to do it this way so that people can see what I'm doing, Alrighty. as opposed to uh, sharing the screen with you. We know what you look like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that all right with you? Feel okay with it? All right. All right. So let's unplug the drone from the computer mm -hmm. and. Uh, this uh, little yellow wire has to go to UART number three. And since it is telemetry, it is going to go to the, let's see, telemetry is coming from the receiver to the flight controller. So in that case, it has to go to the RX3 pad. Um, and before, wait a minute, I don't, I didn't have anything soldered to TX3 on here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I was using it for smart audio. That's why uh, it, it, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a, wait a minute. Where did mm -hmm. I have that smart audio soldered on here? Uh, Hell, I know. Hang on a second. That's not right. Something isn't right here. Yeah. Something ain't right. So where, here it is. Here's the, here's the, this is why, this is the kind of stuff you don't see in a build video where they just cut this stuff out and act like they know what they're talking yeah, about. There you know is. what I mean? With me, uh, oh, the VTX was over here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So UART six is the uh, oh I I wait a minute wait a minute where did I have this connected I had it uh, I had it over over here yeah that's the t it went it went to tx3 there's a tx3 pad over here too there's two tx3 just two different places you can hook tx3 to okay that that solves that problem that's why i'm puzzled so it's going to go to the rx the rx uh since it is receiving information from the uh It's receiving information from the receiver. Telemetry. Wait a minute. No, that's not right. Hold on a second. Let me let me think. Do you hook the do you hook the telemetry to the TX or the RX? The the 
uh, no, it's coming. It's the telemetry is come, coming from the flight controller, going to the uh, going to the receiver. It's going to the receiver. So I have to I have to hook it up to the TX pad on the uh, on the flight controller. Does that make sense to you? The te the information, the telemetry information exists in the flight controller, all the GPS information and all that other stuff, and it and it has to send it to the radio. So mm -hmm. it has to be transmitted from from the uh, from the flight controller. So it has to be hooked to the TX pad. Welcome, Mike Sarney. Welcome to the show. Oh, hey, Mike. God, I haven't seen you in a long time. How you doing? How's everything up there in the Philadelphia area? All right. So now we need to tin this lead. Yeah. Is this in the picture what I'm doing here? Yeah, I can see it. All right. And now we need to uh, heat the pad. Solder the pad. Well, I'm going to use the same pad that the uh, Smart Audio used, and it already has solder on it. So, okay. so we're going to take go. the... Uh, and that pad, that TX3 pad, oh, God. Some things are printed on the board, and some things you got to use the little cheater thing for because, uh, so it goes that way. TX3 is that second pad over there. Oh, that works out pretty good. This just lay right down here like this. Mm -hmm. Don't shake. These tweezers are useless for this because... Uh, you need a third hand. No, I, I need to uh, turn it around this way. There so you go. This soldering iron in this hand, and I'll use these mm -hmm. these needle nose pliers to yep. hold, the, uh, hold the wire like this. Mm -hmm. And it has to solder right to that second. Well, second you're a lot steadier than me. Right there. There it is. All right. Okay, so that's awesome. that's TX3, and I'm going to triple check. I'm going to triple check that. Oh, I already have that thing out. Uh, it goes this way. TX3. Okay, so that'd be my telemetry, there which I just go. set up, and I'll be able to program all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the receiver is stuck down in there with the double sticky tape. The antenna is mounted. Yep. So that's, uh, that's, that's good. Um, cool. There we go. All right. So I think that while I'm soldering, that I will uh, solder up the the wires from the air unit. So let me pull the plug out of the air unit here. Now, what we've got here, and I know this because I have uh, I have the uh, instructions. For the air unit here and it tells me the red goes to 7 to uh, 17 or 2 to 4 s dc the black is power ground the white goes to the uart rx okay and the gray goes to the uart tx and i think that uh we're going to go back into beta flight and make sure i think that i have uart 6 open mm -hmm. and i'm trying to see where the pins are on this board for for uart six mm. uh, uh welcome to show drone pool oh dan how you doing buddy i haven't heard anything about the drones other than uh i'm getting a new parrot swing coming in uh oh i hooked that i hooked that uh that was smart i hooked the uh what did I do? I don't know. I hooked. It says TX6. I thought that was TX3, but it was TX6. The TX3 pin is 
is in a different place. So that was, well, I'm glad I checked. All right. I have to, uh, I have to go back in here and cause this, this, UART six is where I'm hooking up the uh, DJI right. connection. So probably help to put a little solder on there. Okay. So this has to go to TX three, yeah. which is, which is, uh, computer. Oh no, I, 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 I had it backwards. This no is why cool. live streams are so much fun because they watch Mitch screw up. Uh, <laughs> this is why I'm, no, that was, I, I did have it right. I had, I did yeah. have it. I did have it in the, in the right place. That and was we, we, TX3. We, uh, okay. so, I think this wire just wanted to. I think he did. Wow. Come and go a few times on and off, on and off, on and off. Mm -hmm. So let's put yes. it back on there again. So Ken doesn't agree. All right. So that's back on there again, where it belongs. Oh, now I want to make sure that, uh, I want to go, I want to plug this back in and I want to go into the beta flight again. Uh, oh, I've, you're still looking at the screen there, aren't you? All right. Well, that's just as well. Remind mm -hmm. me if I forget to turn it back to the build table. Okay. All right. And okay. let's connect yeah. it up here and let's go to make sure we got it connected. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let's go to the ports and I set UART three to free sky telemetry output. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it says output there. Yeah. Um, Any, uh, I may, I may have to put it to RX. I, 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 I need to, I need to look that up. Um, uh, I needed to Google that. So if you give me, if, if, if we, we go in here and, uh, I, I mean, it, it, logically, you should be able to figure it out, but with the RXs and the TXs, you know, the RX goes to the TX, TX goes to the RX. Sometimes your logic doesn't really work. So let's say uh, FR Sky telemetry port. Uh, Somewhere here, there's got to be a. Okay. Telemetry goes to T to a TX. Okay, which is what I did. Got that correct. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that where I'm looking in the picture here, but uh, over on the right, but it is a yellow wire here for telemetry and it goes to a TX, not an RX. So I do have it set to TX3, which is good. And uh, I have UART3 telemetry output, free sky. And I have UART6 here and UART6, oh no, I have UART6 is my GPS. I, I have to, that's the one problem with this is it, it needs another couple of UARTs. So if I'm using UART six for my, for my GPS, then uh, I don't have a free UART. UART one is the receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have a free UART for telemetry. I have to use that UART three for the smart controller. So sorry about that. Mm -hmm. I'll have to maybe figure out a way to do smart serial and, map another thing, but I won't do that today. I can do it, but I won't do it today. So we're going to disable that and we're going to turn on MSP, which is what you need to turn on for the, uh, the air unit and solder up these things to UART three. So UART one is this is USB, which is what connects to the outside world. You, you, uh, you, the, the, no, you are one is the serial receiver. You are three mm -hmm. is going to be the, uh, uh, DJI air unit and you are six is my GPS. Okay. So that's, that's correct. And so now yeah. again, after all that soldering, say adios to the telemetry wire again, <laughs> such is life. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, 
Let's take that wire. I want to make sure I don't doesn't touch anything anywhere. Yeah. So I think I will go ahead and cut off the uh, the end of it like this. Mm -hmm. And. There we go. Okay. So that we can unplug the uh, the serial port. So that's the, the receiver is uh, is all set. The antenna is mounted down. Now it's time to wire up the uh, the DJI unit. And I'm not going to cut these wires. I'm just going to curl them up wherever. They're already tinned, and so hopefully that'll work good. Now, the uh, the power, the red and the black, are going to go to the VCC and ground, right over there. So let's turn this around this way, and I want to trim these just a little shorter. So I don't know if you're learning anything, Art, but uh... yeah, <laughs> I learned the yellow wire doesn't go there. Doesn't go to in this case, no yellow wire because that's the S bus. If I was using the receiver that that was in the uh, if I was using the receiver, the transmitter, the DJI transmitter, then I would have to to put that uh, put that wire where the wire from my receiver is going nice. right now, the mm -hmm. white wire over here which is S bus in. So this, uh, where is the, it's over, right over there. Okay. So the ground, let's put the red wire in first. Yeah. Yeah. Do that right there. Get a little solder on this tip. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the red wire is VCC. Mm hmm. And the black wire goes to ground. Mm -hmm. This is real small stuff. Right. And this is a 30 by 30 stack too. And you do the 20 by 20 stacks, it's, it's even smaller. Okay, mm -hmm. there's the ground. So I'm gonna take a close look at that under the light and make sure I have no solder bridging. So I have the uh, black to ground, the red to v VCC, which is V bat, which is the actual battery voltage. Uh, right. Okay. Now I have the white and the gray wire, which has to go to TX and RX six. So where are the RX six pads on this, uh, on this board? RX and TX six. There's three. Oh no, I have to hook it to three, not six. Six has got the, the GPS. So I need RX and TX three. There they are. Okay. I see them right there. RX three and TX three. So let me, let me tin tin those oh you're supposed to tell me that i'm not yeah you're, you're not on. there we go okay there you go yeah you're, 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 that's your job you're supposed to say hey mitch <laughs> don't push the button push the yeah, button there you go okay, so always says uh, he hasn't got his husband uh, zeno i mean hubson uh, zeno the other day finally okay all right let's see if i can get this in the center of the picture there we go there you go all right, so over here, I've got uh, RX3 and TX3. And that's what I said I was going to use, correct? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Dan, Dan is used to this kind of soldering. 
All right, a little solder on that pad. A little solder on that pad. Now, let's go back over here and check out the, uh, the white goes to the UART RX. Connects to flight controller TX. Okay, so the white goes to RX3, correct? I guess so. That sound good to you? It sounds good to me. The white wire mm -hmm. we're going to put to... Hello, Chris Hope. Hey, Chris Hope, how you doing? Thanks for coming into this. Uh, you know, I would have thought, Art, that gauging my celebrity status on YouTube that I would have had six or 8,000 viewers in my live stream today. <laughs> you know, I really, really thought that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I, I said that the white wire goes to RX three, correct? Yeah. They both look white to me. Well, one of them is gray. Oh, okay. It's kind of off white. Okay. So there's RX three. Mm-hmm. And this little wire goes to there, and mm -hmm. the gray wire goes to TX3 right next door. Bingo. Yeah. All right. So that's uh, that is those four wires. I don't need the yellow wire, so I'm I'm just going to snip it off. I'm not going to because uh, I might use this harness someday. So I'm just going to snip off the the end there and make sure it's not touching anything now the brown wire is a ground wire and i can put this to any any ground i want on here so okay and you don't even see theoretically from what i understand you don't even need it but why not can't hurt to have things grounded it's yep. just it's supposed to be the ground wire for the uh s bus the signal wire but well we got a free ground free ground connector right there so it's a little bridge there it looks like What's that? You look like you got a little bit of a bridge going there. On which one? Uh, from your ground over to the, yeah. Five volt? No, that's yeah. just uh, that's just a little flux. Ah, uh, okay. It looked like yeah, it's just just a little soldering flux. Ah, uh, okay, that's good. Yeah, thanks for thanks for uh, for pointing that out. However, mm. but uh, the uh, the flux. Uh, the shiny flux sometimes makes it look that actually it's harder to make a bridge with these things than you might think. Sometimes when you're trying to make a bridge on purpose, you just can't get the solder to, uh, oh. to, uh, here, let me move this back in the center here. All right. So now we're going to put the brown wire brown. to this ground brown. right here, brown. right there. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. All right. So that is, uh, yeah, we, that's we all hooked up. There we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we don't need this little cheater thing anymore for the, uh, for the flight controller. Right. So we'll put that away. Hopefully I don't need to look back at that anymore. Now we've got this. Mm-hmm here and this is going to go this way to the uh oops go front front mitch front yeah. okay so now what we want to do is we want to take and install the camera in this little in this little deal here hopefully right. we get it in there so it's got some screws in the side mm -hmm. let's take out all the screws This is tiny stuff, you know. I mean, I was really shocked by the size of this uh, this stuff when I uh, mm -hmm. when I actually first unboxed it last night. I was really surprised at how small how small it is. The uh, flight controller, um, the air unit rather box is is relatively small i was i say i was really surprised okay so now 
got the camera there and I have a funny feeling I might might need longer, but the camera's got to go through here and which mm -hmm. side there's an up arrow here. So that's up. And it goes through through here. All right. And then we got to find a hole that lines up somewhere. There we go. We'll do it that way. Mm -hmm. well, there's another hole here, and that raises the camera up just a little bit higher. The problem is they don't have a hole in the middle. They got, mm -hmm. and I also want to make sure I'm not going to get the lens protection I want from this thing here. See, right. it sticks out a little bit on the side. So I want to try to maximize that. And I think by pushing it down, I'll get, uh, I'll get more of the lens covered up. But that's, that's fine. That's enough up tilt. Okay, so let's try and see if we can get a screw to catch in here. Come on, baby. All right. Good, it's snugged up. Tilt the camera up a little bit. And uh, I think that's going to work. So we try take another screw. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know this is exciting action here. <laughs> I know it's riveting. Mm -hmm. Riveting action. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on the edge of their seats, biting yep. their fingernails. Mm -hmm. ah. Okay. So let's take, and you don't want, for a cinematic thing, you don't want monstrous up tilt, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, about 15 or 20 degrees. Yeah, think? I think that's about it. Anyway, I can, I'll just, I won't snug them down. I mean, it's pretty snug in there. Mm -hmm. And then, where's the top of the cameras here? And then this, good. This is going to mount right there like that. So let's take and screw that back in place here. Can you see what I'm doing on the screen? Am I in the picture? Uh, you need to get more into the center. There you go. All right. So we will put this. Oh, that works out great. Yeah. That works out great. Okay. Get and uh, two in. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yep. So there's the camera mounted. And then this is going to flip over like this. Oh, okay. And mount right underneath the top plate. Right. Um, and that will get rid of this battery strap temporarily here. Get it out of the way. Mm-hmm. So, we got anybody watching us here? Uh, just Chris, Drumpool, Mike Sarney, Papa Joe, Steve. I don't five know. People? Oh, okay. Well, we got just five of us. There's four people plus me, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's fine. You know what? If they're not interested, who needs them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do. Who cares? I care. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. So this is going to go here like this. And then this is just going to mount right up under here with some foam tape. And 
I can get to the, uh, I'm going to mount it where the, perfect. Oh, that, yeah, that's going to work out pretty good. So let's take this and get some foam tape on the back, which just seems to be the way that they, uh, they've got a big, right. nice, nice, big piece. It, it, I, I, you know, I could put a tie wrap around it too, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Let's get a nice big piece of this. And uh, stuff's pretty sticky. Yeah. This is the world's worst scissors. That train is still watching. Joe C is still watching. Good. Yep. Good. I appreciate it, guys. And so you're in. You're you know, not I'm hoping that. Boring. that, I'm hoping that uh, that I get some replays on this one, you know, because when you replay one of these live streams, you can skip around, which is nice and just skip over the boring parts. All mm -hmm. right. So now we've got the, uh, got the foam sticky tape on there and, uh, we will take, yeah, grab the corner. Yeah. The, you need it. That's the only problem with this stuff is uh, you need a, a okay razor knife to get underneath the corner. There we go. There you go. It wants to pull up the corner of the foam too. All right. So there's that. Now, I want to put it where the, uh, the SD card slot is right in the middle of this little cutout here. See? Right. So I want to put it right there. We're going to center it up. Put it on there lightly to see if if everything fits, and I have enough room for the connector in the front and the antennas. So that uh, I think it probably could go back. Well, it's not going anywhere. That's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, that's on there. All right, so that. Uh, that goes like that. This wire here goes mm -hmm. up to the front and plugs in like this. That's in there. And then we're going to just run that along the back. And uh, this slides under here. And this just goes down on there and can i see the antenna yes i can see the antennas but i better plug them in now <laughs> so we will plug in the two antennas oh man it's just it's good that that's nice the antennas hit the back of the uh they just hit the back of the blue oh cool see that and that's yep. nice because that that helps secure them in place and then the antennas are just going to stick up like this out of, out of the you know i'm going to tie wrap them up to this thing Mm -hmm. And uh, that's perfect, perfect place. There for you go. Yeah. Two of them will be far enough apart. A lot of these installations have them crossing and they're a little close together. So let's put this antenna in. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think that, uh, I think that's going to work. Okay. So let me, uh, Put some, put some screws in here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think is there anything I need to do, anything else I need to do before mm -hmm. I screw this down. Let me take a look at it from the side. I can tie these wires up a little nicer in there, I suppose. But uh, actually, they're probably okay. Um, well, that's a pretty neat, uh, and the thing is going to be right out there in the open with the a lot of wind blowing on it. Uh, mm -hmm. it. It's got plenty. I was worried about the clearance between the bottom of the air unit and the top of this particular leg here, but the wire that's 
that's coming out between them is loose. So it's got room to slide around there. Nothing's being pinched. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that that's, that that's in there. So mm -hmm. I think that I can button it down here. There you go. Okay, button it down and uh, two more, two more screws up here. Okay. All right. All right, I'm done soldering. There you go. Turn that off. Yep. And uh, get some of these some of these tools out of the way here. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see this art? This little tool holder I 3D printed. I 3D printed that nice on my 3D printer and it really uh it really uh really works out nice, see? Oh cool. Very handy, nice. handy little thing. Well, I got the 3D printer. I figure I may as well I got to do something with it. Yep. But, uh, all right, so this is it. We got these two little camera screws left over here right. that, that that came from which are I don't imagine they're anything proprietary, but I I'll just put them here in my little I have a little extra excess screw bin over here. And then uh, I have uh, collections of these uh, standoffs and posts and things that uh, that I bought. Hello, two stroke me FPV. Oh, two stroke me. How you doing? And Mark Linder, welcome. I think Mark's been here all along. I think he well, decided. I think he decided guy. that he didn't want to mow the grass. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> well, you say he got the stink eye from his wife. <laughs> all right, and I got all these extra screws, and I have one compartment in here where I just keep all kinds of miscellaneous screws. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so. Got to spend about forty, fifty dollars on Amazon and invest in uh, invest in uh, a, a, bu a bunch of screw and standoff assortments if you want to be in this hobby. I'm afraid. Yeah. You got to have those things. So you can't just uh, sit around and go nuts because they didn't give you the right size screws with the kit you're building. <laughs> so it's it's yeah. uh, it's a it's a good investment. <laughs> okay. So now I should be able to plug this thing in mm -hmm. and I got a SD card here. It's only 32 gigabytes, but it's okay. Yeah. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to plug it into this, uh, to this, to the air unit. Oh, that's good. You can reach that real easily. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to uh, tie wrap up the antennas. Uh -huh. There you go. So I want to tie wrap the antennas up here. Mm. I'm going to do it through, through here. Because we don't want the antennas coming off. We're falling, going down into the propellers. And you know what? I think this is one of those places where I may use two tie wraps mm -hmm. <laughs> on each one. There you go. Because this is one thing you would hate to have that 
break and have that thing flop down into the propellers and yeah. not only break the antenna, but crash the quad in the process. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and, and put one of these on each side. There's room for them. There you go. I can get it through here. Huh. There we go. I wanted to do it the other way. Good. There you okay. go. That's one side. One thing you got to be careful as you start moving these snippers around in here, you don't yeah, that's cut off true. the damn antenna by accident. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be bad news. You know what Murphy's Law says? Well, I, yeah. I already did that once with a receiver antenna. I was trying oh. to tie it to something, a little tiny little one from, and just, I thought I was clear of it, but I wasn't. And I snipped <laughs> it off and I had to replace it. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Oh, so. Uh, oh man. So that was uh, that wasn't a good, uh, no, a good thing. So now I'm extra careful. Ruin no, your day. Yeah. When I bring the snippers down into the near the thing, I'm I'm very careful about. <laughs> yeah. It. All right. So where is it? I know it's in there somewhere. There it is. Okay. Let's get that. Uh, well, then you'll be a good moil down the road. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of snipping. See, so you know what a moil is, huh? Oh, yeah. I, I used to live in Michigan. A lot of <laughs> Jewish people there. A lot of Holocaust survivors lived there. My dad was a house painter, and he painted a few houses for people who survived the Holocaust. Oh, the Holocaust survivors. No kidding. They still had the tattoos on their their arm and my dad said well why don't you get that removed and, he, and they said no i want to show people never forget yeah it's true yeah there we go okay that's where i want it i think that's where i want it and i learned a lot about uh catholic stuff because my my best friend was a, a hardcore cap Catholic. I'd say, "Hey, Dave, let's go play." And he goes, "No, I gotta go to catechism." <laughs> hey, Dave, let's go play. No, I gotta go to altar boy practice. Hey, Dave, let's go fishing. No, gotta weed the yard. <laughs> Hey Art, I'm glad you stopped by here. Appreciate it. Yeah, no makes problem. it uh, makes it a lot uh, a lot more enjoyable to have somebody to chat with. Yep. Like since I can't keep looking at the chat, well, look at that. And again, I talked about it. Let's not cut off the uh, cut off the wire, the antenna. Okay. So there you go. It it's got a uh, it's got like a bug. It's got antennas sticking yeah, up. There you it's go. gotta be it's gotta be good antenna placement for these things. And they're flexible that if you crash upside down, the battery is here, it won't break them. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? There's only one thing left to do here. One last check in beta flight to make sure that I have everything there you go. correctly. And then we power it on. Just put an SD card in the goggles. Smoke. 
I can get to see what the picture looks like in the goggles. Tomas O'Sullivan, welcome, welcome. Oh, Tomas, how you doing? How you doing, my friend? Now we got up to eight people now. Okay, yeah. well, that's cool. All that's right, so today, so we got that we got that on, and mm -hmm. uh, let's go into uh, let's go into beta flight here, and let's uh, connect. Let's. We are connected. Yes, we are. Let's go into ports. And I have UART one is the serial receiver. UART three is the MSP is turned on and everything else is disabled. UART six is set to the GPS. That is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think. Uh, oh, I need to go into my CLI here, and I need to change the VTX, the command that was powering up the VTX. Mm -hmm. So get VTX, and this will show me the commands. And what I what I want to do is VTX low power. I need to turn that off uh -huh. because what that did. So we'll copy that. We'll go down here to the line and say set, paste, and change this to say off. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, the channels and the rest of the settings on a VTX make no difference, but that mm -hmm. uh, that one setting does. So we save mm -hmm. and it reboots the quad mm -hmm. and uh, reconnect to the quad. And let's see what else we got. Any other settings? Mm -hmm. OSD doesn't matter anymore. No nope. motors. Let's uh, just for the fun of it. Hook up a battery to this thing and spin up the motors. There you go. And I also want to see if the uh, I want to see if I get a a light on the air unit that tells me it's getting power. Yeah. So I do. I have a red light on the air unit, and uh, it says it's getting power. And now we take the goggles. And uh, we will take the goggles and. Uh, mm hmm. Yeah. Do this. Power up the goggles. Mm hmm. Right mm -hmm. here. All right. And they came on. And I have. Have a picture. How cool is that? I have yeah. a picture. It works. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to shut off the goggles. I want to uh, unpower the quad. Disconnect from beta flight. Oh, I wanted to. Well, I'll check the arming of the motors. And I don't have the transmitter turned on. So mm. we'll disconnect from beta flight and then uh, disconnect the quad here. Mm -hmm. Now I need to go and get a. Uh, be right back. I need to go get a uh, an SD card. Yep. There you go. For the for the goggles. Okay. Here we are. I got a little huh? little armored case. <laughs> <laughs> and let's take oh uh, these are good. Yeah, I got a couple of these uh I've got this thing that holds all my these SD are the, cards, see the SanDisk Extreme. Pro pros, not just the extremes, but the extreme pros. Oh yeah, the hundred. Uh, yeah, that makes me that makes me a professional. You know, I mean, yeah. uh, you know, if it says pro, you're a professional. Mm -hmm. So here, here on the side of the goggles, I'll show you here, is a slot right there. Oh, okay. Right there, where you slide this in, and I'm going to hope that it goes in with the colored side up. I got it right the first time. Okay. Oh, nice. My fingernail isn't long. I just cut my fingernails. Mm -hmm. Not long enough. So let's see. 
There it is. It's in there. So I got an SD card in the goggles. There you go. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I want to test the recording. I'm going to plug the goggles back into the power, power them up. There it is. I'll get used to these things. All mm -hmm. right. So the goggles are powered up. I'm going to power up. Let me, let me strap the battery on the quad here. There you go. Bet Mike Roach hears that a lot. What's that? <laughs> I bet Mike Roach hears that a lot. Oh, strap the battery. <laughs> So let's see. Uh, yeah, do it that way. Gotta go, gotta go this way. Yeah, gotta go that way. Mm -hmm. Oh, you pulled the strap out. That's right. It's just a loop there. there uh, you I'm go. going to use the uh, the easy. The best thing to do would probably be to strap it down right through the middle here. Yeah. But I want to balance it, you know, and 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 uh, I want to balance it with it with the air control with the air unit. Right. You know what I mean? So the battery is going to have to be right about in the middle here. So right. I'm probably going to end up uh, sticking a battery strap right in the center yeah. here. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. But for the time being, this will work just for testing. We'll put it way to the back like this. All right. So it's holding in there. We're going to power, power it up. There we go. And I want to see if I have a, a picture in the goggles. I do. Oh, nice. now, now I want to hit the record button on the goggles. And it says recording twice. Okay. So now I'm recording in the goggles. Right. What the, uh, what the, uh, the drone camera and I'm, 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 I'm looking around and, I think the camera lens might be a little dirty because because I've been got fingerprints all over it, but that's okay. Uh, here, let me set the goggles down. Maybe wipe the the lens a little bit. Mm -hmm. All we see is the bench right now. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, hang on a second here. Let me give you let me give yeah, you the big order. Right. There we the go. View. So what I'm doing here is I'm I'm holding the camera down and I'm looking at my I'm looking at my studio and this is what I see in the goggles and man, is it ever gorgeous? And it yeah. says that I have 11.7 uh, volts of the goggles battery, but I don't have a receiver turned on yet for the right. radio. Uh, I'm on channel four. It says uh, I'm recording in two different places. I'm recording in the, on the goggles and the air unit and uh, it says that I have uh I'm getting a 25.3 millisecond latency. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, that's my tw my frame rate is 25. But I haven't set up any of the uh, settings of whether I'm in high quality, whether I'm using 120 frames a second, or see, I haven't gotten to that yet. All right, so we did it. So let's set the quad down mm -hmm. and stop the recording. There you go. Very good. And uh, shut off the goggles. And shut off the uh, unplug the quad. And now, what I want to do is I want to take the the SD card out of the goggles. Right. And I want to show show everybody and myself what the goggles just recorded. Okay. How's that? That's so let's plug wonderful. this in here. And let's mm -hmm. go to uh, DCIM. Mm -hmm. There it is. Uh, 9 14 at 2 they even knows the time and uh, let me let me play that okay so and what i'm going to do is go over to to there oh yeah that's, that's that's what i just oh, that's what boy. i just that's what i just recorded through the that, drone that is really that's what nice. i saw that's what i saw in the goggles <laughs> That's where I clean the lens. <laughs> that, that's even better. Wow. That is, and I mean, looking at it on the computer screen almost doesn't do it justice as to what I just saw in those goggles. Uh -huh. um, 
Boy, that that'll be great for when you're out flying. You get oh man, nice, I mean it's 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 really, really, it's really unbelievable. Yeah. It's really just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Uh So what do you think? Very nice. Yeah, Very nice. nice. We're starting to get me. Let me make it, me make it bigger. To do that. Let me get me out of the way so 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 you can all uh, right look at the the, the the whoops the beautiful goodness here mm -hmm. of this thing. Uh, here I'll start it. I'll start it over again. But that uh, that's what the goggle recording looked like. <laughs> Wow, amazing. Yeah, I need to clean the lens on the on the on the thing. But it was it was just incredible in the goggles. And that's the one thing that you can't portray when you do a live stream like this. You you can't uh portray the emotional impact of yeah. of of the image that you see in these goggles you hear these guys saying oh wow oh my god you know now i can never go back to my other to my other <laughs> thing again uh look at that dynamic range yeah dynamic range it is <laughs> unbelievable i mean uh i don't know how else to say it it's just uh, it's just mm -hmm. absolutely fabulous picture so that's now now let's uh let's let's stop that mm -hmm. and uh let me get you back in at art. Okay. There you are. And uh, let's stop that. Now let's uh, let's take that. Uh, let me eject that that thing. I always eject these things. A lot of guys just pull them out. I always end up ejecting them. Old habit. And uh, let's put this back in the goggles where it belongs. Mm-hmm. Um. I say I haven't gotten gotten into the uh, fine points of the settings on the menus and all that other stuff. I just really wanted to make sure that it worked. So let's take that, put that back in the goggles, and now I'm going to get the SD card in the air unit, which is really convenient here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's just right, just sticking right there. See it? I see it. Really, uh, really convenient to get it in and out. Mm -hmm. All right, so we'll take the SD card out of the air unit. Now, this is a 32 gigabyte one. I'm probably going to put, uh, I got a, another one of those 64s I'm going to put back in there. So I'll do that right now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to put one of these new new extreme cards in here. Yeah. So let's do that first, and then we'll look and see what I just recorded on the, on the air unit. Mm-hmm which is supposed to record at uh, 1080p 60. So mm -hmm. I'll put that in my little micro SD card reader here. Plug it into the computer. And uh, let's see what we got here. We got, uh, oh, I got all kinds of stuff on this card. There it is. I think this is, yeah, 914. Is this, and this should have audio with it, too. I don't hear anything, but worry about that later. Okay, this is the... Uh, This is the, the the recording from the DVR on. Oh, on the on the and it looks identical, doesn't it? Yeah. To what to what I recorded on it, what I saw on the goggles. Right. But that's uh, that's what it recorded, and let's just for grins, let's see what the uh, what it says about the uh, about the file itself. It says that it is. Uh, 14. Oh, okay. I have it set in, I must have it set in four by three mode. Mm. 
because it, it recorded 1440 by 1080. I can you can set it either to four by three or 16 by nine. I haven't gotten in there and played with these settings, but you can see obviously by the squareness of the picture that it's four by three picture, but it is recorded at 60 frames a second. And uh, man, does that look good? Mm -hmm. yep. I'll tell you, this is, <laughs> if, the, if the thing doesn't cause any problems flying, and you don't get any big dropouts and right. freeze ups and all that other stuff that cause you to lose your drone. Uh, this thing could really revolutionize FPV. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think so when it first came out, but uh, the rest of the industry, the fat sharks and all these other goggle makers and all these VTX manufacturers and all of these, uh, uh, these people, uh, and I know they're working on it, but, uh, it would be a shame if DJI did to them the same thing they've done to the rest of the drone industry. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when you got something that is just far superior, mm -hmm. uh, the market's going to talk to you and the market's going to tell you that uh, we want, uh, we want, we want that, uh, we, we, you know, we like you, we love you and we're loyal to you and mm -hmm. you're great and you're wonderful, but uh, you know, we like the other guy's uh, picture better. So, I think, I think they're going to have to, uh, right. Take notice. Mm -hmm. I may be wrong, but, uh, right, let me take, uh, let me take a little look in the, in the chat here. Yeah. And, Joe, uh, catch up with everybody. Great build and great results. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Go. So yeah. Good to see you, Papa Joe. Oh, okay. Papa Joe. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. And, yeah. uh, I like your brother's pizza, Papa John. Papa John's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's there's that, and uh, well, housekeeping done. There you go. Uh, and uh, close that out. Um, oh, I got it. What else? Uh, okay, let me take a look at the chat and see see who's here. Uh, um, Tomas, Joe, Tomas is still here. Hope they work great for a bit. They do, Tomas. They work uh, the goggles. That's crystal clear. It is. It's it's just unbelievable. Right. Night train says double yeah. strap. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree with you, Night Train. I'll work out the strap details. You know what I'm what I'm thinking about doing with this thing is this is a big seven inch quad. Right. And it's not going to be carrying a GoPro or any heavy cameras. And this right. this uh, DJI unit is very is very light. It's not real heavy. Uh, I'm going to get some 4S, I think 2200s, which are longer and a much high, higher capacity. This is only a 1550 and right. that'll, that'll work great with the double straps. Right. Uh, I mean, I can use this battery and just, I can use double straps and catch both ends of it, but uh, I, you know, this can carry a much longer battery. It's got uh, right. plenty of room up top. The antennas, I think, uh, I think the antennas really uh, make it make it look cool sticking up yeah. like that, <laughs> and they do stick up above the batteries. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's a, a, a turned out to be a great. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it turned out to be a great solution for the. Uh, well, you know, Ken Heron got that, and I think he's going to really like it when he gets it on his. He flew his first thing. flight without. He flew his first flight without antennas. If you remember that. Oh yeah, that's right. And he wondered why I kept crashing and it wouldn't work. <laughs> uh, the, uh, but that, that's a, a fairly uh, easy installation with that thing. It's very well protected in there. It's tucked up in there. It's just on there. I'm surprised how, how nice the, the video feed was. Oh, it's unbelievable. And, and again, you can't hardly tell the difference between the, the goggle feed. Now, I'm sure when you're out flying and you're way at the limits where it starts, you start to get the uh, pixelating on the sides. Oh, okay. You won't, you won't get that in the DVR recorded on the drone because it's recording right from the camera. So you'd be able to see the difference there. But from close up like I did, and this was just set on 25 milliwatts now, of course, right. we're testing in the house here. Um, I think it worked out. I think it worked out just fine. 
cool. Uh, cool, cool, cool. It was easy. It, 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 it was easy. If you've got a frame that has room for this, it's actually a lot less building and a lot less setup than a normal analog and VTX. Like I say, the only downside, however, is that you just don't have the, uh, you don't have the uh, OSD information that I really like. But from what I understand, DJI, the information is available from the flight controller mm -hmm. uh, to the DJI system. So uh, from what I understand, um, they're, they're working on that and that'll probably come out in a, in a future firmware mm -hmm. release. But in the back end, I still got the uh, GPS antenna. It's still got the GPS rescue uh, going to work in it. That's still programmed in there, even though I can't see how many satellites I have. Uh, the right. thing won't let you arm unless you have at least, I have it set to six satellites. So I'll know if I don't have a GPS signal. Mm -hmm. uh, that should give me a Jeep, what they call GPS rescue or return to home on. Right. So now what we've done is we've, we've gone all this way and all this, uh, technology to basically uh get a picture as good as the spark <laughs> <laughs> but be able to fly and do loops and rolls and <laughs> cool. and, and everything else but that uh, that's terrific so it worked out pretty good i hope it wasn't a waste of time for you guys uh that was that was watching great. watching this little adventure here and uh um let me take a look at the back in the chat for the past little while. I use your still watching, watching still. Night train still here. Drone pool still here. Uh, at least he was uh, at two eleven, and it's uh, it's about ten to three now. So this has been going on almost for two hours, mm -hmm. which really wasn't bad. When you, I didn't really do any of the work until I started uh, started the stream. I didn't. Uh, I. I prepped by thinking about it and uh, mm -hmm. figuring out what I was going to do. I didn't want to waste a lot of time on the right. screen, but, uh, uh, but that, uh, that ought to do it. Uh, okay. Tomas, take care. He's got to go. And uh, night yeah. trail. Thanks, thanks for coming in too. I'm about ready to go make some lunch. All right. And uh, two stroke me said, that's a gap crocodile. I don't, it's a, it's a gap frame. Uh, I don't, I, I know the number like the LC seven or something. It may, it may be what they call the crocodile, but it is a, it is a GIP RC frame and I love their stuff. So yeah, that's what it is. And again, for the, for the final time, the, the, uh, the reason that I wanted it for this was, but it's what they call a dead cat. And yep. that means that, uh, the, the, instead of the front, uh, arms sticking up forward, they're pushed mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And that keeps the props out of the camera, which sticks way out in the front, which makes it an ideal layout. And it's the layout you're going to see for most of the frames that they're, that they're developing, mm -hmm. uh, that they're going to develop for, uh, for the, uh, the DJI FPV. Mm -hmm. I did 3d print these, uh, little bumpers for the bottom of the motor here. Oh, cool. And, uh, when you land, it's, I right. do like top mounted batteries better than bottom mounts because you don't beat the pants off the batteries if you make a bad landing. And, right. Um, so that's it. That, uh, I think it's, it turned out to be, a, I still have a lot of, uh, of fiddling and checking out and setting and learning the menu settings and all the different options available in the goggles, but uh, that'll be uh, some subject matter for another video. These antennas are on there each with two tie wraps and uh, it turned out that the uh, it butted, the air unit butted right up against the back of the blue uh, TPU right. mount for the camera, so that uh, that's not going to go anywhere. I I need to I do need to tighten the camera up a little more because I didn't right. tighten it down all the way. All right, guys. So with that, uh, I think I'm going to get ready to make a graceful exit here. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. let me get get my my graceful exit music going. There it is. Okay, and I guess everybody's departed. There's only four of us yeah, left. Yeah, Albert is here and Josie. Let's see it fly. Oh, absolutely! I'm gonna. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going. Hi, oh, Rick Albert. How you doing, buddy? You missed. You, you just just chimed in here at the very end. Uh, 
got the uh, got the build all done. Got the uh, the uh, mm -hmm. air unit in there and the camera in there and the antennas and uh, worked out worked out great. Uh, so cool. I think that uh, I think it's going to be a uh, and it's a seven inch drone, so it ought to fly nice and smooth. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll get to, I'll get to really enjoy it. And uh, I'll, as soon as this uh, Umberto makes its way past this region of the world, things ought to calm down and get less windy. And hopefully uh, by the uh, by the end of the week, I'll I'll have a uh, have a nice video of some of the first flights of this thing. Uh, and my and my further impressions, uh, at least by Thursday night, I'm hoping for my live stream. And I may, if there's something I think I'm going to be doing to this, it might be interesting to see people. I, oh, <laughs> I think I'll, uh, I'll may fire up another live stream. But uh, in the meantime, this is my third day in a row with live streams. So uh, that's a new record for me. <laughs> All right, Art, thanks for coming in and helping. All right. I really, I really appreciate that. And, uh, I guess we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you the next time. And yeah, tonight. Don't forget tonight. Tonight. Seven yeah. I, yeah. Okay. I, I will. I will be there, buddy. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. -bye. bye. Okay, everybody. Whoever's left, five of you. Uh, th <laughs> thanks for uh, thanks for coming by and 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 keep me company while I uh, did my first build. Uh, for the uh, DJI FPV system, and uh, really didn't run into any any problems whatsoever. Now I just have to learn how to make sure I work it and learn all the settings. So with that, I uh, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll uh, send it over to uh, to Spank. Let him say goodbye to you. See you later, guys.